Hi again. Let's talk about our weather app here and checking for errors and setting up our app ID and stuff, right? So this time around, what I'd like to do is I'd like to um, fix our app so it uses our app ID and uh, checks the HTTP response, right? So you'll need to set up your um, Open Weather Map account and get yourself an app ID, okay? When you have your ID, you can just paste it here in your in your project. Right now I'm looking at the um, weather service.swift file and I've just created a constant variable here called app ID and I've you know I set the app ID up here as a string, right? Okay. So next what we need to do is we need to make a path to open weather map. And our path needs to look like this. It's going to be http slash slash api.openweathermap.org slash data slash 2.5 slash weather. And that's, that's the path, okay? Right? And then, then there's this question mark, right? So, so this is the path right here that we need, okay? So just get that figured out, right? And then after that, this is like extra information that we're sending to the server, okay? This is called the query string. And the query string includes name and value pairs. So, you know, the, the two values or the two names that we want to send are Q and app ID, okay? And, uh, you know, if our path looked something like this, if I, let me copy this here. Let's imagine I have the path something like that, right? And then I have the question mark here. What I want to do is I want to add Q equals and then some value here, right? And then when I want to add another value, I'll use the ampersand and I'll name that value and then put the equal sign and give it a value. So actually I should say I should give it, you know, put the name down and then say equal and then put another value here, okay? Let me break that up with a couple... Um, Shoot, and then this thing wants to, um, you know, treat it like a URL, right? I'm gonna, I'm gonna just delete this first part here so it doesn't um, make it a link, right? But you know, if I put some spaces in here, you'll see that I've got the name here, equal sign, and then the value that I want to set. So when we use the Q name the value is going to be the name of the city. Okay, so we'll say city here. And then ampersand, we begin a new value. And then we need to say app ID, and then this needs to be our app ID. Now, now you could just put your app ID here. It's kind of convenient, though, to just use a variable there and then have the app ID here. It's easier for you to edit the app ID, right? So, so that's why I've done it this way, okay? And and when you do the, the thing here, you can't really have any spaces around here, okay? So so I'm just doing this for clarity just a little bit, you know, make it a little easier to read. But in here, um, we can't do that, right? So what we're going to do here is we're going to say, um, in, in our row down here, since it's a string and it's inside these quotation marks, right, we need the backslash parentheses, and then we can insert a variable. So this is city name escape that we created up here earlier. And then over here after app ID, we'll do, you know, backslash parentheses, right? And then we'll say app ID, and that will be the value that you put in here, okay? So there we go, right? Um, and then that should, be our, that should be our string, and then we can use that to make the URL, make an NS session, create a new data task, right? Okay, so now let's take a quick look at this data task, right? And this is kind of a long method, right? It goes all the way over here. Let me um, move some of this. I think I can put that on the next line, and it's, it's okay with that, right? So, so the parameters here for data task with URL, right? Um, this receives three parameters. Data, which is type NS data. Response, which is type NS URL response, and it's an optional, so it might not get a response, right? It might be nil. And then, um, actually, all these are optionals, right? And then there's error, and it says, you know, NS error, which might also be, you know, nil, okay? 
So let's concentrate on response right now. So the server response is one of, the, it should be one of the standard server responses. So let's look up um, HTTP response. Right, let's look up HTTP response code. Here we go, status code definitions. So, uh, you know, here's a, here's a page that describes to us what the codes are. There's 100 is continue, 101 switching protocols, 200 is okay, request succeeded, right? And then there's a bunch of these. Um, let's get down to the 400s, which are interesting, right? Um, let's see. Uh, yeah, 400, bad request. 401, unauthorized. 404, not found, right? So you've probably seen those before, right? So anyway, our HTTP URL response should include that information, okay? And to get at it, what we need to do is we need to do this. We need to say if let HTTP response equal response as an NS HTTP URL response. So actually this right here is a class that is, or an object like already built into the framework you know, NS HTTP URL response, that is one of those URL responses, okay? So this kind of manages that. And it has a lot of other properties because the server actually sends a whole bunch of information describing, you know, the state and how everything is working. Um, one of the properties it has is status code, okay? So, um, you know, in my example here, I just added this if statement to check to see if it's there because this is a an optional, right? So it might not... Have, it might be nil and we might not get a value, right? So um, we're putting it here and then we're going to cast it or attempt to cast it as an NSHTTP URL response, right? And so if this, if this is successful, right? So it means this is not nil and this it's able to cast it as, as this type, then we'll have, you know, a variable called HTTP response and it will be an NS HTTP URL response, right? So the HTTP, res HTTP response will have a property called, in that case, we'll have a property called status code and that will be the value, like 200, 400, 401, 404, right? Okay. And right now I'm just printing this out to the, um, to the, uh, to the console, right? but um, you could send it to your other file too. We could respond with, um, you know, weather error, you know, with message, right? So we could send it that way. Um, I'm leaving that out for now, right? We can come back to that later, but, but this is how we're going to get the regular URL response, right? And if you, um, you know, if I test this right here, just imagine that we're testing just this part, right? Um, and I'll put... Um, a print statement in here with just some stars around it, right? So we can see what is happening. And if I test it, you should see, you know, the, the error code or the status code, right? So if I type something in here, like I type in, uh, you know, uh, how about uh, Seattle, right? And then you'll see at the top here, there's the stars, and then I get the, the error code, right? And if I was to type in something like this, I was to type in, um, you know, I'll just leave it blank, right? That always generates an error. So if I, I click OK, actually it won't generate an error. It's going to generate an error for the weather, but it's actually going to generate an OK response again, right? If there was something wrong with our, um, our app ID, for example, I take the app ID out, and then I'll test, right? And then this time, when I try and set the weather, you know, no matter what I do, it's going to give me a 401, right? So that's like unauthorized because you don't have the correct app ID, okay? So anyway, so that's how we use the HTTP response, and we'll add some more error checking for that later, okay? Um, so thanks for watching, and I hope that's interesting.